Watch this, y'all. Verse 3, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Skip to verse 7. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And fill, they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, said unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Concluding at 11, the, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Thank you so much. Beloved, one of the greatest things to ever experience in life is to experience the miracle working power of Jesus. To be honest with you, beloved, we've gotten so blessed by God uh, that we're really spoiled by God because he performed miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives and sometimes, believe it or not, we take it for granted. Beloved, don't you know just you waking up this morning and you got up on top of the ground and the ground was not on top of you, tell your neighbor that's a miracle. Don't you know every time you inhale God's oxygen and exhale God's carbon dioxide, tell your neighbor that is a miracle. If you got up this morning and looked around your house and the death angel passed over your house while y'all were sleeping, you ought to give God some praise because that is a miracle. Am I in the right house this morning? Beloved, when you just look back over your own life and see where you had aches and ailments, but yet God gave you his anointing, that's a miracle. When you look back and see where you had bumps and bruises, I wish I had a witness here. You had bumps and bruises and burdens on your back, but instead of God letting it beat you down, he used it to build you up. You ought to get happy right there and give your God praise because that's a miracle. When you look over your life and see, beloved, when you was crazy and you was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but yet God cared for you and he kept you and covered you, you ought to tell him, thank you, because you are a miracle. When you look over your life and you had to deal with demons and the devil and demonic forces, you had to deal with the spirit of depression, the spirit of doubt being dumped and duped and put down, but the Lord used it to deliver you. You ought to give God praise because you are a miracle. When you look over your own life and see all the problems God has brought you over, all the pain that God has brought you through, all of the predicaments God has brought you around, but yet the Lord keep on providing for you. I don't know what you're waiting on, but somebody ought to pop up and tell God thank you because you are a miracle. Anybody here know you are a living miracle? Y'all real quiet right there. Anybody here know that you are? Matter of fact, won't you tell your neighbor your new name? Say, neighbor, my new name is Miracle. Come on, help me somebody. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, you wouldn't be where you are right now. That's enough to tell God, thank you, because you are a miracle. Here's the thing, y'all. Here's the thing. I know why you're sitting there looking at me. Because the reality is, many of us, or people of God, sometimes don't know what a miracle really is. Are y'all in this house? 
a miracle, the word comes from the Greek word Simeon. Can the church shout Simeon? Simeon. You spell it S-E-M-E-I-O-N. In the Greek is Sigma, Eta, Mu, Epsilon, Iota, Omicron, Nu, Simeon. Which is a sign that God gives to get your attention. In other words, a miracle is when God does something in your life that nobody but God can do. He does it to get your attention to let you know that the Lord, he's talking to you. Do I have a witness in here? A miracle is an extraordinary event performed by an extraordinary God using ordinary circumstances. You still don't know when to give God praise, do you? Do I have a witness in here? Beloved, nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, whether you know it or not, you're a miracle. <laughs> Beloved, do you even know what it takes to just keep us alive? That's a miracle within itself. You have a heart in your chest that's a muscle that got four chambers, right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle, tricuspid, bicuspid valve, blood flows out through the pulmonary artery, turns around and flows back in through the pulmonary vein, and the reason you're still alive is because your blood has never got crossed up and it has never got confused. You ought to tell God, thank you, that's a miracle. When you think about how you work from sun up to sundown, do I have any help in this house? You work overtime, under time, in between time. You work through lunch, work without lunch, work around lunch. And when you do get paid, you realize you don't have enough bills to pay your bills. Much still longer than your money. Got the wild Peter in order to pay Paul, and you've never met neither one of them. Do I have a witness here? But every time you get home, your light's still cutting off. Phone's still ringing. Food's still cooking. Car still cranking, gas still burning, children still praying. You ought to give God some praise right where you're standing and tell God, thank you that I am a miracle. <laughs> and when you think about the fact that one Friday on a hill called Calvary, that was a miracle. He died for your sin and mine when we should have died for ourselves. Can somebody shout miracle? miracle. Hung from the third to the ninth hour, died from the sixth to the ninth hour, shout miracle, miracle. to nails in his hands. Spikes, I wish I had a Bible reader in this house. Took spikes in his feet, took a crown of thorn on his head, took a spear thrust in his side, out came flowing blood and water. Blood for redemption of sin, water for baptism, buried in a dusty grave, but early Sunday morning. Can somebody shout miracle? If there's a text in your Bible that's tailored to teach us train us and tutor us about the fact that the Lord is still in the miracle working business is what he does in this town of Cana when he turned water come on help me somebody helping me preach over here into wine but in order for you to appreciate John chapter 2 you got to press the rewind button and go back to John chapter 1. All right, Come on, help me somebody. In John chapter 1, y'all, Jesus has called five disciples. He's called John the apostle. He's called Andrew and then Simon Peter, Andrew's brother. He calls Philip who goes to get Nathaniel. He calls five disciples. But here's the thing somebody needs to hear. It's not enough for you just to receive the call. But after you've received the call, God got to get a hold of you to give you the commission. I don't have any help in this house. 
In other words, your commission is what God has sent you to do. But the Lord knows what we don't know. He knows that as soon, thank you, Holy Ghost, as you step out to live for the Lord, that low down devil is coming to your house. I don't need but three amen right there, and I'll make four. Anybody here know that as soon as you start serving God, that's when the devil show up. As soon as you make up your mind, I'm going to church, I'm going to live for the Lord, I'm going to start doing what's right, I'm going to live to lift up his holy name. That's when trouble in our H-E double hockey stick seems to break out in our lives. So here's what God has to do. God will let you go through some stuff. He'll perform a miracle as a sign to get your attention to remind you, you ain't in this thing by yourself, that God is still standing by your side, that he's talking to you, and he's getting ready to turn your situation around. He brings them to Cana. I'm already almost through right now. Uses a wedding, Spe specifically turn water into wine to strengthen the faith of his disciples that if I can turn water into wine, what make y'all think I can't turn a sinner into a saint? Jesus said, if I can turn water into wine, what is it in your life I don't have power to turn around? None of your neighbors said, neighbor, keep your faith in God. He can turn that thing around. I need to ask y'all a question. If you want me to go any further. Anybody here want to experience God's miracle working power? If you want to experience his miracle working power, that he can turn things around in your life and strengthen your faith, he is God's word for somebody today. He says, very simple, you got to invite Jesus to the table. Here I come, here I come. It's simple. Your Bible says there's a wedding in Cana. The mother of Jesus is there. Jesus and both the disciples are called to the wedding. Beloved, where we mess up is we have a misunderstanding of what being a Christian really is. Your Bible said that Jesus went to a wedding. You ain't caught it yet, have you? Your Bible said Jesus didn't go to church. He didn't go to vacation Bible school. He didn't show up at your Sunday school. It's in your Bible if you hadn't whited out. It said he went to a wedding. In other words, Jesus went to a social event where people at the event, all of them weren't saved. And sometimes here we are with our stuck up self so holy and heavenly minded we ain't no earthly good. And sometimes we think we can't be around sinners, we can't be around the world. Tell your neighbor, you might not be a real Christian. If Jesus went to a wedding, tell your neighbor, what's wrong with you? What make you think or I think that we more holier than him, that we too good to be around sinners? Are y'all in this house? The trait of a Christian is that not only can I hang around with saints, but I also know how to act when I'm around sinners. You missed that, didn't you? You know why we missed that? 
because sometimes we done got so sanctified that we forget that yesterday we was the sinner trying to be a saint. And you ought to really give God praise that, that you were saint and you used to be a sinner, but you ought to reach back and help the sinners to come on up that they can become a saint. I'm just trying to make it plain. You got to invite the man to your table. He went to a wedding. It's a picture of the church. The church, like this wedding, is full of folk. Everybody ain't saved. You ain't got no church if everybody in there saved. The work of the church is to do simply two things. That's our vision at Cherry Grove, to help the saints become stronger and help the sinner become a saint. You ain't got nothing else to do. You either save or you're going to hell. If you pick which one you're going to do, talk to me, somebody. It ain't no in between. Are y'all in this house? And if you are a saint, meaning you're saved, you come to church so you can be made stronger. If you are a sinner on your way to hell, meaning you have not accepted Jesus, you're at the right place because hopefully by the time I say amen, you'll give your life to the Lord and become a saint. From that vision come your ministry. And so everything you do at the wedding or at the church is geared around simply and only those two things. He showed up at a wedding. But watch this. The church is not a hotel for folk to sit comfortable. The church is a hospital full of sick folk trying to get a cure. Tell your neighbor, that's why I like you, neighbor. See how y'all won't say nothing right there? No, they ain't gonna bite you. Just, just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's really why I like you. Because I finally figured out you crazy just like me. Something wrong with you just like it's something wrong with me. Talk to me, somebody. And beloved, when you get to the place where you realize you're not better than the person on your pew, V and me and you, we can get along. He went to a wedding. But not only did he go to the wedding, not so much to try to save somebody. To be honest, y'all, Jesus went to the wedding to have a good time. How many of you know you can be a Christian and have a good time? I wish I had some help in this house. Beloved, how many of you know that just because you're saved don't mean you got to stop doing the electric slide? You ain't got to stop doing the Cupid Shuffle. You don't have to stop pop locking and break dancing. and talk to me, somebody. You, you don't have to stop listening to rap, R&B, hip hop, slow jams. Are y'all in this house, country and western jazz, reggae, or gospel music? A real Christian know how to handle what they can handle and stay away from what they can't handle. It's a poor creature to live in this life and die and ain't never enjoyed yourself. How many of you know you don't have to smoke brunch to have a good time neither? You don't got to drink no liquor to have a good time neither. You don't have to cuss, flirt, and act the fool to have a good time either. How I many of you know you can have some good, clean, Christian fun if you open up your mind? Your Bible said that the man went to a wedding and he showed up had a good time while he was there. But notice why he went to the wedding. The Bible said Jesus and the disciples were called to the wedding. That word called is the Greek word to be personally invited to the wedding. 
is written in the passive voice, which means the subject of the text is receiving the action. Plain and simple, Jesus did not invite himself. Jesus was specifically invited to the wedding. You missed your praise point and your shout stop, y'all. If you want your marriage to really make it, invite Jesus to the table. If you want your home to have peace, invite Jesus to the table. If you want your job to work out better, invite Jesus to the table. I wish I had a, some help in this house. If you want the church to be the church that God wanted to be, invite Jesus. Can you do me one favor? Slide your hand in your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, Jesus is the difference maker. I got to go. My time is all read up. I don't even think I gave a title to this sermon, did I? So you can name it whatever the world you want to name it, whatever you want to put on. Not only invite him to the table, but you have to invoke Jesus to handle your problem. Invoke, invocation, simply really mean to pray before you do something. And ask God to come in before you get there. Here it is. There's a major problem on the scene. Your Bible said the wine ran out. But yet Jesus was at the wedding. I'm going to pray for wine and say that one more time for time's sake. The wine ran out while Jesus is at the wedding. How many of y'all know, beloved, that just because you got Jesus in your life will not exempt you from still going through some problems? You can have Jesus and still get cancer. You can have Jesus and still go through a divorce. You can have Jesus and still get your truck repossessed. I wish I had a witness here. You can have Jesus and still get hit. You can still have Jesus and still get sick. You can have Jesus and somebody still lie on you, talk about you, and can't even pronounce your name right. Do I have any help in this house? Just because you got Jesus does not exempt you from going through some problems. But here's the praise point, and here's the shout stop. If I just have to go through problems, I'd rather go through problems with Jesus than try to face my problems and don't have Jesus. Don't have any help in this house. If I gotta go to surgery, I'd rather go with the Lord than let a doctor cut on me and I don't know the Lord. Don't have a witness here. Shake your neighbor hand one more time and say, neighbor, Jesus is the difference maker. There's a problem. The wine done run out. What you got to understand, church, in the Jewish custom of marriages, the bridegroom, somebody needs to hear this today, the bridegroom, the groom, was ultimately responsible for the wedding. It was very important. He had to pay for it all. Thank you, Reverend Bender because it was a sign as a man and a husband. Simply put, if he can't afford to take care of the wedding, what make you think he can take care and afford a wife? Let me tell you something, my brother and my sister, you thinking about getting married? Before you say I do, my sister makes sure that Negro got the two J's in his life. Somebody shout 2J, throw your two fingers up like this, say 2J's. You, you need to put this on Facebook, 2J's. He need to have Jesus and a job. Talk to me somebody. He need Jesus to teach him how to take care of his family. He need a job to have the resources to take care of his family. The wine ran out. Now to be fair to the groom, 
to be fair to the brother, in the Bible days, the groom would hire a ruler of the feast or a governor of the feast, the wedding planner. And he would hire the wedding planner to make sure that everything needed for the wedding was in place. Are y'all in this house? Somewhere along the line, the wedding planner dropped the ball. Because the problem is in your Bible, the wine don't run out. In other words, this is one of the most clearest pictures of the church today. Jesus is the bridegroom. He's ultimately the one responsible for getting us to heaven. The wedding is the church. But he's left rulers of the feast. Help me somebody. Governors of the feast, a.k.a. pastors and preachers. Sunday school teachers, Christian leaders, ministry leaders, are y'all in this house? Seething saints, he's left us here to help the wedding or the church not let the wine run out. The wine is the Holy Ghost. Tell your neighbor, you got to keep focus on the main thing. The most important thing is that Sinners get saved. And you that are saints get strengthened. Y'all don't know how to say amen to the right thing, do you? That's your cue to say amen right there. He performed a miracle. The wine, <laughs> it ran out. Jesus, what? You go do. Now, this wedding was out of order. I just told you that the bridegroom was responsible for the wedding. But if you read your Bible close enough, you never heard one mumbling word from the bridegroom. The Bible said, Mary, the mother of Jesus, says to Jesus, the wine has run out. Can somebody shout out of order? In other words, it really wasn't her place to do that because she's not the one responsible for the wedding. The bridegroom should have stepped up and said, Jesus, can you help your boy out? I ran out of a little cash. Can you loan me a little something? <laughs> so I can make sure we have enough wine. In other words, don't ever let somebody do for you. <clears throat> what God has given you strength to do for yourself. I wish I had a witness in here. At some point, we got to grow up and become more, more mature Christians. In other words, you can't make it off of your mother's testimony. You can't live on daddy's testimony. <laughs> you can't get to heaven off of big mama and papa testimony, but nudge your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to know the Lord for yourself. He said, get the water pots. I got to stop, I'm, I'm, I'm out of time. He said, get the water pots. Fill them up with water. And when they filled them up, he turned the water into wine. Get the water pots. Fill them up with water. He turns the water into wine. Get the water pots. Fill them up with water. He turned the water into wine. The water pots symbolize the people of God. The water symbolize the presence of God. The wine symbolize the power of God. Pray for wine, say it one more time. The pots symbolize the people of God. Second Corinthians 4 
and seven say, we have this earthen treasure. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, God has put his presence in our lives. Do I have a witness here? In other words, this first miracle that the Lord performed at Cana is a pre-picture of the last miracle that he will perform at the cross. You see, at the cross, he really turned water into wine. <laughs> because when Jesus died, he turned our lives around. <laughs> at Calvary, not only did he fill us with his presence, but when Jesus died and rose again, he filled us with his power. <laughs> Tell your neighbor so I can get out of here. So neighbor, it's time for you to operate in his power. Yeah. Deuces. I'm out of here. But there he is. One last little thing. I told you that my God, he will perform miracles in our lives. Are y'all praying with me? I told you that my God, perform uh, miracles in uh, our life. Do I have a witness here? Uh, I heard uh, the Lord saying you have to invite Jesus uh, to the table. Do I have a witness here? Uh, you gotta invoke uh, Jesus uh, to handle uh, your problems. Uh, but there is uh, another little piece, uh, and I'm through with y'all. Uh, I thank God uh, that His intentions uh, they will uh, come to pass. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, look at your neighbor um, uh, and say neighbor uh, is coming to pass <laughs> are y'all listening to me uh, tell your neighbor uh, is coming to pass <laughs> do I have a witness here um, uh, now watch the text <laughs> the bible said <laughs> that the wine uh, it ran out <laughs> and here come Jesus <laughs> he said and, uh, get the water pots, <laughs> fill them up with water, um, <laughs> and draw in, uh, and draw it out. <laughs> the Bible said uh, that somewhere <laughs> between drawing in uh, and drawing out, <laughs> the water, uh, it was turned to wine. <laughs> Help me close here, y'all, <laughs> and look at somebody and, uh, and say, man, that's what happened in my life. The God I serve somewhere between my bending knees and standing on my feet, he turned my life around. Is there anybody in this house can be a testimony? The God I serve, he turned and, uh, he turned your life around. Uh, tell somebody, and, uh, if you want to see a miracle, uh, just look at me. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, do I have any help in the house? Uh, I thank my God uh, that he still uh, is working miracles. Uh, do y'all hear me in here? Uh, we serve a God uh, that can turn things around. We serve a God uh, that can pick you up uh, and place your feet. 
ground on a solid ground. Do I have a witness here? The Bible said the real reason that God performed the miracle, it wasn't because of the wedding. It wasn't to turn water into wine. But verse number 11, the Bible said the disciples, they believed. I'm out of here, y'all. I see you Wednesday night, and I see you Sunday morning. But tell somebody, I believe he can do it again. Wish I had a witness here. Anybody in this house, you still believe that God can still do it. You still believe he can raise bow down heads. You still believe he can wipe tears from your eyes, slip your arm around your neighbor, slip your arm around now your neighbor pull a man like they your best friend in saying neighbor the God that I serve he can do it again in your life he can turn it around in your life how you know preacher that Friday y'all he turned it around he died anybody know he died but early Sunday morning he got up I need three people to grab three people and help them get up. Early Sunday morning, he got up. I need three more people to help three people get on up. Yeah! 